from wakeboarding and zero assets under management to owner and CEO of a commercial real estate investment firm with 150 million assets under management 11 years later, here's Nick Jones in the house. Let's get inspired by his story. Welcome to the Adriana Montes Real Estate Show. My name is Adriana Montes. I'm the CEO and broker owner of Florida Dreams Realty and Capital Group. You can reach me at 321-689-6258 or my email is adriana at floridadreamsreality.com or you can find me on my social media. I'm so happy to be here today with a really good friend of mine and also a very esteemed colleague in the commercial real estate industry in Florida. Here's Nick Jones in the show today. Welcome, Nick. Thank you, Adriana. I'm looking forward to spending some time with you and chatting about our business. Thank you, Nick. I've always been inspired by your story. Uh, like I said in this introduction, a wakeboarder, you're a very successful wakeboarder, and now you're a very successful commercial real estate owner and investor and owner of a real estate investment firm. So I want to show and I want to tell our listeners how it is possible to go from one career to another one and be successful. So why don't you start and telling us a little bit more about yourself? So my story started where I grew up in Seattle, Washington, and my family had some background in real estate. So I was exposed to it at a young age. And it, what really interested me at first was the idea that in real estate, you can be focused on one business, but yet interact with businesses all across the, uh, all across the spectrum, whether it be tech, restaurants, office, medical. And uh, that always fascinated me that you could touch so many different people with one industry. That turned into, over my uh, younger years, um, something completely different where I fell into love of sports, uh, prefer preferably action sports, and got really into snowboarding and wakeboarding, which then transitioned me down to Florida, where I wakeboarded professionally for about seven years, which is obviously very different than real estate, but it taught me a lot of good life skills that I was able to transfer into the industry that I'm in now. And the largest of that was commitment to a purpose and following through every single day on you know, what you're committed to doing and practice. And that, that translates to business and you see it across the spectrum with athletes as you know, they've, they've learned the tools of consistency and the tools of knowing that it's the small steps that you make every day in and day out while not taking days off uh, that really add up and can create a larger, uh, you know, kind of a larger role in your life down the road. So, so I was able to enjoy my wakeboard career for about seven years. I always knew that it was a young man's sport, which I, uh, I learned pretty early on in my mid twenties after a few injuries, decided that maybe it wasn't the best fit and I should transition to something that's a little more long-term and fulfilling in life. And at that point I started from the bottom in real estate. It was a, uh, it was a challenge. It was a uh, somewhat of a new industry. I'd been exposed to it as a child, but haven't really had much practice or experience in it, you know, thereafter throughout my wakeboard career and just took the, you know, the fundamentals of hard work and trying to absorb all the information I could as a sponge from the people around me. Luckily, our industry is surrounded by a ton of people that are wanting to support you and mentors. And so I was able to, you know, hitch, hitch on to a few of these people locally in our central Florida community. And from that was able to over, you know, years of, uh, of learning and growth, grow into what we have now with our company and uh, you know, be able to manage people and teach them now as well as, as, as a leader and teaching them to leaders and uh, growing our portfolio with ourselves and our sponsors and with our partners. Wow, Nick, what a great story. Amazing. I know that we share so many values together about consistency, about work ethic, about working really hard and day after day, persistency, and also uh, going to resources like mentors, um, you know, role models in the industry. So I love how you explain uh, your story and how you told us how you went from a wakeboarder uh, to a very successful real estate investor. And but let's go back to a fun fact about uh, your wakeboarding and snowboarding days. I did hear and I see some pic I saw some pictures that you had long hair. So tell us about that. How how was it, uh, life with long hair? And any fun facts or any fun things that you can remember that are so memorable about that uh, sport? So. It, it's interesting. You know, long hair isn't just about the hair. It's it was uh, it almost embodies a full lifestyle. So when, when we were wakeboarding, it was the the carefree lifestyle that you really you really let life come and enjoyed it. 
on a day by day basis, which is really hard to remember these days, you know, in the, in the business environment, which I'm sure we'll touch into a little bit later, but it, it was all about living in the present. And so the idea of kind of being carefree and letting loose uh, embodied that long hair. And it was, it was a, a statement of expression of, uh, you know, the kind of the life that we were living at the time, the, the sport was, was amazing. The opportunities it was able to provide. We were able to travel the world on the USA team. And so we got to see far off, you know, countries like Singapore, China, Malaysia, uh, Thailand. And when you're, when you're doing that as an athlete representing your country, it, it was a really neat experience because the local municipalities, whether they be the countries or the, or the mayors of the countries in certain regions, really wanted to open the door for you and show, you know, what you were seeing. So we were able to travel around quite a bit. The, the most fun places that I went where I created the closest relationships were down in South America and uh, in particular Brazil. And there are a lot of Brazilians that work in the state of Florida now. So I, I work with them quite a bit. And my, my first experience of them, of their culture was very fascinating because in, in America, you know, people tend to think of timelines a little more uh, uh, finite and, and accurate where, you know, I'd fly into Belo Horizonte or, or Manaus or one of the other you know, cities down there. And I'd tell my friends about the time they need to pick me up and no one would be at the airport. And so you, you'd wait there and you know, they'd be off somewhere else and they'd show up casually and you'd, you'd make it to the contest and, you know, things weren't really on time, but they always seemed to work out well. And everyone kind of had a, a cooperation together where, you know, they made things work and it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, at one point, I actually had my, my passport, my visa stolen from me when I was down there. And uh, at the time I was early on in my career. So I had to scrap and uh, sell almost all of my, all of my equipment, from my wakeboard, my ropes, my boots, to be able to fly into the capital to go to the U.S. Embassy to get a new visa and then make it back to Manaus, which is where I was based out of, and fly back to the U.S. And there were just friends of friends and people in the community that were coming out from, you know, all over the place to help out. They, they'd pick me up at the airport. They'd let me stay at their houses. They'd drive me to the embassies. So there was such a neat culture down there and such a great community that uh, it's still one of my favorite places to go and visit. And uh, I still respect and, and love the heck out of it. So I, I miss that part of the, the industry the most. But there's, there's a lot of fun times, mostly around travel and experience in other cultures. Wow, I mean, that's amazing. That's a great story. And having to sell everything to get your passport, wow. And that's actually something that I miss so much. I mean, I'm from Latin America and from some of our meetings, you can see I show a few minutes late. So I can relate to that so much. Uh, time is, um, the deadlines are not as serious, you know, in South America. Uh, but that's something that I miss so much, you know, like South American, Latin American countries are very, are collectivistic societies, you know, like you are there for each other and it's just so much more warm. And America is very individualistic, which is, I mean, obviously why it makes our, um, our system work and so successful for business owners and entrepreneurs and and it's why it's still like one of the greatest countries in the world if not the greatest but yeah I do miss that you know that human touch where you know it's, that's that that is so much more important than getting a business deal uh, so I, I'm so happy that you got to enjoy that um, Fala Portuguese did you learn some Portuguese there? I see I see <laughs> lightly Lightly. <laughs> That's amazing, Nick. Oh, wow. What a great story. So you are telling our, our viewers, our listeners, that you actually represented the USA team. Tell us more about that. Yes, there were, there were two of us on the team. So it was myself and one other gentleman. And uh, we were able to travel around the world representing the country in the, uh, the world championships as well as the uh, regional championships. So... That was one of the most exciting parts of the industry is most of, you know, the hub of our sport is generally the United States. There are quite a few of Australians as well, but they all migrate over to the U.S. for our summer. And so most of the contests are around the U.S. Um, in addition to that. So the opportunity to go and, and represent the country was, was really fun because you're able to meet riders that sometimes wouldn't make it over to the U.S. So we had riders out of, uh, out of South Africa. We had riders out of, um, like I said, Taiwanese riders, Chinese, Russian, um, German, the, the English were always a lot of fun. And when the riders came from their specific countries and they weren't kind of uh, bred into the culture of the U.S. as a lot of the uh, pros that lived over here have, uh, it was just fascinating to see how every person 
and uh, you know every team approached the contest differently. You could almost see how their home cultures were as the way they approached the riding. You know, it was, uh, it was very you know strict and, and rigid for a lot of the Chinese riders because they you know they had a, a plan of action and they wanted to execute on it. And then you'd see you know some of the uh, riders from the UK that were you know a little more laid back and just you know positive in general. And then you'd go all the way to the you know some of the Australian riders that were just I mean, wild time 24 seven. So it was really fun to be able to interact with, uh, you know, all the different cultures and, and the riders and the friendships we were able to build and experience together. Wow, that's incredible. And that's actually the power of traveling. You know, you get to see all the cultures and you get to appreciate them. And I mean, cultures are incredible and everybody has different values. But at the end of the day, you know, that human touch and being there for each other, I think that's 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 what we all share and also the desire to grow. So uh, let's go back to your company and how you transition into real estate. And let's talk about, and if you wanna share a little bit more about your family and how that contributed to you going into real estate and how you chose the name of Red Belt Capital Partners, I would love to hear all of that and more. Absolutely. So my, as I mentioned, my, my family was in real estate growing up. My, my father and grandfather, I had built a few buildings up in the Seattle region. And so I was able to experience uh, what that was like, the freedom of it. Uh, you know, as a child, my father was at home when I'd come home from school at 3 p.m. every day. I took it for granted when I was young. Now, as I'm a, you know, an older person, I, I really appreciate the sacrifice that takes for someone in such an entrepreneurial business. As all the entrepreneurs out there know, there are no work hours. And if you have to make a commitment to your family uh, you know, do things like that. And that's a real challenge when, you know, a lot of times people's businesses are their family. And so, you know, having that disconnect, I, I really now appreciate more than ever. Uh, you know, as I aged, unfortunately, I had some familial issues uh, in my, you know, young adulthood where both my father and my grandfather passed away to, when I was a senior in high school. So that mentor that I hoped I'd have in my life uh, faded away pretty quickly and uh, anything that they were growing as a business, uh, you know, pretty much went to a halt. And that probably sprung me into action sports. I was able to focus my passion on wakeboarding and, and uh, my time and effort. And uh, that was probably led to a lot of my success in that sport. And it was amazing seven years. But then I had an accident with my with my mother uh, about 2012, where she passed away. And that was uh correlated very strongly with my decision to retire from wakeboarding. I'm not really sure still to this day what promoted that, but it just felt like a time to move on from that chapter of my life and go to what I would imagine to be my, my final chapter as a career in back into commercial real estate. And so I was able to jump into the industry, unfortunately with no mentors, uh, but you know, I had to experience as a child and you know, there's so many resources out there for mentors, both uh, in person, in books, online. And so, you know, I was able to, to use that really as a catalyst to push, to push forward. And where I grew up in Seattle, there were these two, two suburbs. One was Redmond, and one was Bellevue. And between the two were the uh, Bell Red Corridor. So I just flipped that around because that's where I, you know, spent most of my childhood and was able to create Red Bell Partners based off of that. And it was, uh, it was an interesting place to grow up as well, because in my, in my childhood, there were a lot of people in tech. And this was you know, back before tech was what it is today. It was pretty new. And you know, as, as I was growing up, you'd see people's parents all of a sudden start to drive Porsches to work and uh, you know, be able to go on a lot more vacations. And it, it turns out, you know, later looking back without knowing it when I was young, that these were all Microsofties when Microsoft went public. And uh, they were the ones that were lucky to be in the tech sector where you know, we were in the real estate sector, so it didn't make much of a difference on us at the time. But I've always had a, uh, a close love for my hometown because it did teach me a lot. There's a lot of uh, amazing places and people throughout Seattle. They, the culture up there, I think, is strong. It's a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of determination that I was able to embed in myself as a young boy and is still following me through, through to today. Wow, Nick, what a beautiful story, Red Bell. Uh, coming from, from Seattle and from, from where you started. Um, and I'm really sorry about your parents. I'm very sure that they're so proud of you and everything that you're doing and every, all the purpose and 
that you have in your life and the impact that you want to do with your real estate company. So tell us more about like, uh, what is the structure of your company? How many employees do you have? What uh, divisions do you have? Uh, what is your focus? Uh, more of like, yeah, what's your business plan? Where do you see yourself in the next year, in the next five years? Absolutely, absolutely. So our company comes purely from entrepreneurship background. And when I say that, what I mean is I had a passion for acquiring real estate. And when I thought that I built up the skills enough to start acquiring real estate, I did so. And luckily the market was in a, a great period of time. The Fed was handing out what felt like free money at the interest rates that we had. And so we were able to, uh, I was able to acquire a few properties, uh, fix them up and put them back on the market and then sell them and use that capital to uh, continue to grow a portfolio. And I did that for the first few years without having to bring in employees, just kind of being a one man shop. And as momentum started to pick up, started to have a need for some help and not coming from a, a corporate background, had to kind of think on my feet of how I would build you know, help coming into the company. And there was definitely some trial and error. Uh, you know, some employees that we brought on that didn't make sense. And so I you know, had to let them go or they decided they you know, shouldn't be there because the job role didn't make sense. And uh, over the last about two and a half years, uh, it was when I first got my first employee uh, that was a controller and an asset manager for the company. So she would pretty much handle everything while I was handling acquiring new properties and bringing them to the portfolio. And then from there, we brought on a property accountant, an ARAP accountant, an asset manager, and now we're interviewing with analysts and a development coordinator. So currently we have five employees and we're looking to grow to seven in the near future. One, one of the things I learned from our industry is that employee count isn't as important as the quality of the employee. And we have made a strong push to create values within our company that uh, you know, we live and breathe and actually matter. When I first put together the, uh, the idea of having a, a vision and uh, you know, values, it, it didn't really feel as much in my heart as it does now. Um, because now, you know, I look at our, all of our employees as our team and every person on our team has a very important role. You know, the team can't win without every single person being involved. So regardless of how big or small that role is, we all depend on each other and we all build each other up. And that really comes out through our culture where, you know, everyone is excited to come to work. We're excited to work hard, but we also, you know, respect each other, um, respect the work that we're doing. We also respect, not being at work and having our, our lives outside of it. So it's, it's been a, a fun journey over the last two years of growing a business rather than just acquiring real estate. That said, acquiring real estate was my first love and I still love to do that, which is why I still had the acquisitions for the company. And our, our business model in that regard is fairly straightforward. We try to find assets that we have some competitive advantage and then we look at our risk relative to the reward and want to make sure that that is uh, an equation that we're willing to take on. So we always want to protect our downside risk uh, while performing on value add type investments. So we will do everything from ground up construction you know, we're building a, a preschool right now, a Starbucks. Uh, we built some dental office and then we do a lot of value add stuff. So whether it be you know, renovating the facade of a strip center, repositioning an industrial park, um, or, you know, buying out parcels that just were underutilized before, you know, old banks, old restaurants that we can reposition, revitalize with new tenants. Uh, you know, we look across the spectrum for ways that we can actively add value to the real estate and uh, provide a higher than market return for our investors while still hedging our downside risk. And it's, it's worked out well. You know, we really dig in deep and we focus on the analytics of the property of the market and really make sure that our homework is, is tied up nice so that we uh you know have any failures and that's worked out well for us you know, we haven't had a failure yet knock on wood uh we've also benefited from as we know the an amazing market so we may be transitioned into a little more challenging times but uh our models work successfully and we look forward to seeing it continue to grow as you know now we're looking to scale the company and uh you know bring on more as i mentioned development coordinator and analyst to help us uh you know push our portfolio past you know, where it's at right about now, which is about 150 million to, uh, you know, our next target is 500 million. And then we want to get up to a billion within the next, uh, you know, five years or so. Nick, what a beautiful uh, explanation of how you grew and how, how this journey actually that has taken you in this, in this personal and 
and career growth uh, from wakeboarding uh, to being uh, an investor uh, to then now uh, wanting to grow your company and scale and also have a purpose on the, on the company that you have, on your employees and build that culture. So it's it's been um, it's been incredible how you have explained and how you how you tell us about your passion. So very happy that you came into the show to share today on that. Uh, so I would like for you to share and your contact information so that our listeners and viewers can get a hold of you for any of their commercial needs or questions that they may have. Absolutely. So the, the easiest way to contact me is via email, and that is Nick, which is my name, N I C K, at Red Bell Partners. Dot com, or you can go to our website, www.redbellpartners. That's red like the color, bell like a church bell, partners.com. And you can reach out to me by email through the website or on my LinkedIn. And uh, you know we are fairly busy, but we generally get back within 24 to 48 hours uh, to any email that's reached out to us. For all of you that are just joining us now, uh, we're listening and watching the amazing inspirational story of Nick Jones going from Wakewater to a very successful commercial real estate investment firm. So uh, also my contact information is, uh, my number is 321-689-6258, or my email is adriana at floridadreamsrealty.com. You can uh, follow my YouTube channel and like my social media, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and I look forward to hear from you. Like you heard from uh, Nick um, from Wakeboarding, and now uh, you can contact him at Nick at RedBellPartners.com. Let's go to a commercial break. The Power Is Now magazines are the leading resource for real estate agents, mortgage bankers, entrepreneurs, and small home ownership businesses, providing leaders with business strategy information resources and tools through PIN, Real Estate, Programming Guide magazines. Stay up to the minute with real estate news and information from industry experts. Subscription is free. Sign up today. ThePowerIsNow.com. ThePowerIsNow.com.